Hi, this is Mike Hendrickson from Velocity 2014 in New York City. I'm here with Steve Miller-Jones. Steve, how you doing? I do very well, thank you. So you're with Limelight Networks. That's right. And are you based in the U.S. or are you in your European? No, I'm based in London, uh, okay. in, in the U.K., so I'm a European representative of our product management team. Are we going to see you in Barcelona as well? You certainly will, yeah. We're going okay. to be uh, talking in Barcelona. Um, we have a, a slot in one of the mornings. Okay. And uh, yeah, so you'll hear from us there. Excellent. So. Can you give us a little quick overview of Limelight Networks, what you do? And yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, Limelight Networks is a global content delivery network, and uh, we own and operate our own private infrastructure, which is based in uh, over 40 points of presence around the world. And they actually turn out to be over 80 individual uh, locations that make up our 40 points of presence. So London, for example, we have like four or five locations, uh, as we do in like LA and all, all around the world. And so we end up with uh, a 10 terabit plus, 10 terabit per second plus network, globally connected, run as a private, operated as a private network, um, that then gives us a huge amount of scale and scope for delivering both you know, static cacheable content like big software objects or videos or small videos or you know, JavaScript files and uh, images that you might use in your websites and web apps. And it also gives us a great opportunity to really focus on delivering dynamic content. You know, the HTML frameworks, the application frameworks that make up so much from today's uh, modern internet. And so then you guys then layer on top uh, monitoring and real user monitoring, that sort of thing? Uh, yeah, kind of, yeah. So we obviously monitor our own, our own right. network so that we right. know how the network's doing both from you know, our position as the network operator, as it were, um, and we also look at data from uh, real user services right, that right. tell us a little bit more about how people are experiencing uh, what, how our network's working. So you're a fan of rum? I'm a great fan of rum. I like a good talk on a pirate ship every now and then. Yeah, yeah. But um, no, real user measurements uh, you know, really give a lot of power back into the hands of you know, the website, the web application the operator, the DevOps groups, because it really tells them about what the user's experiencing. And what I like about it from Limelight's perspective is it's this external in view um, and the, the richness of the data means we really get a good understanding of how well we're operating for those end users rather than just, you know, did I shift the bits off the pipe and it, they went or did I actually get them to the user and did the user actually have a good experience while they were using the site that we were helping to accelerate? So, you know, I know you're giving a talk and we'll talk about that in a minute here, but sure. if there was one thing that you think all these smart people around here don't understand about web performance? What is it? Um, you know, there's so much that goes into, into web performance, so we could talk about you know, lossy compression for images or lossless compression or you know, LKIP delivery of images, or we could talk about you know, whether you do compression if you're trying to get it off, off your origin down to the end users. Um, but I think something that's pretty important is in this whole piece of delivering the dynamic parts of a website. So what I mean by that is any, any personalization that goes into an application or into a website has to talk to an application server somewhere. And that might be a real long way away from the actual user. So it could be all the way across the United States. It could be, you know, the user could be in Frankfurt, your origin could be in LA, or even going across to Asia. You know, a lot of Asian companies have origins in Singapore, Hong Kong, Tokyo, and they have users all around the world. So getting this dynamic content, you know, you can't change the speed of light, right? That's constant, you can't change geography. But with the, what I think people may not understand is to truly accelerate dynamic content, you need to be able to avoid the congestion points on the internet yeah. and actually it put in place optimizations kind of from you know, right close to the origin and right across the end user, this middle mile where all of this traffic has to traverse and has to get towards the end user. You really need to optimize that. And I think without being in control of all the pieces, without being in control of a, a single network that can do that, then you're kind of just hoping that someone you're giving the packets to is going to do a good job for you along the way. Right? You don't have uh, any SLAs, you don't have any idea of control. And so I think you know, the fact that we own and operate this private network means we really have the best way to accelerate dynamic content. So is there a first mile, a middle mile, and a last mile? And, yeah. And does Limelight Optimizes all, all three. three of them? Yeah. Okay. So the first mile is like the connection between your origin and, and the edge of the Limelight CDN. So what we do there is we, we use uh, you know, techniques for connection pooling, um, TCP acceleration, optimization, both the requests to your origin 
and in the responses we get from the origin. So, of course, you know, the infrastructure should be tuned, um, but then once we get the content in, we can compress on the fly, we can look at how to distribute it out through our network in the best way possible. So we optimize across that middle mile. And then in the last mile, we're doing a lot of stuff. We're doing a lot of caching. We're doing uh, you know, rules on request, and rules on response, which is kind of like looking at the request flow itself, looking through the headers, looking through cookies, looking at the IP data and saying, hey, do we need to make some logical decision at the edge that affects how we deliver this stuff? And then we also, in the last mile, uh, we also have a lot of uh, features for optimizing the browser experience, the so-called front-end optimization pieces. So yeah, we really do address the first, protecting the origin, scaling what the origin can do, keeping the ROI down for the users, the middle mile, where all of our network comes into play, and the last mile, where you know, guy on a mobile phone yeah. needs to get his app right then, right there, right? So here's a question that I've been asking a few people, and I, I want to get your take on it. Um, responsive design, Right. Websites almost seems like an oxymoron to me. Um, okay. When I'm on my my desktop or my laptop, it doesn't seem anything but non-responsive because the scrolling or the going to the right or going all the way down, loading more content, seems like it's anti-intuitive for performance because you're loading so many images as you scroll. You scroll too quick, it hangs up and just sits there. Right. So. Why do they call it responsive design? So I think the responsive design piece is about how the uh, HTML is adapted for the screen. And also then yeah, about, yeah. about um, maybe what kind of images you get. So it's not performance responsive, it's just it's like, um, responding to my environment. Responding to your environment. But then you need to be able to work out, hey, you know what, uh, we don't want to get all the desktop quality images for this it, guy because he's on a mobile phone, right. he's never going to see them. Right. So you also need to be smart about how your application chooses what to deliver. And so you, know, you can use services like the kind of things we have in our front-end optimization to help you with that, because we can look at you know, the IP address, we can look at the user agent and say, hey, for this request, you should be using a bit more you know, of, a, of a lossy compression to get those images down quickly. And then you know, maybe after the page is loaded, you could load in the full big ones, right? Because once the page is loaded, they've started to interact. Yeah, you've got yeah, them, exactly. and they're engaged. Yeah, and then you can load the full object. Yeah, it, it just to me it seems like that area is ripe for performance yeah. enhancements and making this work better. Yeah, I think so. And yeah. maybe it's also my response to responsive design is I like to feel like I read a page, uh -huh. and then I can move to the next page, yeah. and, like, and it's all there waiting for yeah, you. Yeah, it's not like this yeah. constant scrolling thing. But anyway, that's off topic. So. <laughs> You're giving a talk tomorrow about 17 things you need to know about website performance. Right. 17? There are 17. Uh, there may be more. Uh, there aren't less. <laughs> um, at, you know, I was thinking what, what might be fun for everybody at the end of the show tomorrow. And it's the 17th. So I figured I'd bring 17 things along, one for each day of September so far, and just go through a few, a bit of English humor in there um, as well. And just look at, you know, is, is the... Um, is the cat internet meme of cats, is that ruining your website experience? And if it is, what do you do about it? Um, and we're going to look at what I think is sort of the three of the main kind of ROI aspects, like trying to look at the business side as well and say, hey, if you get a faster website, what does that mean? Right? Do you get less abandonment? Do you get higher conversion? Do you get better user experience? Are those three things you can actually hang your hat on? Say yes. We improve the speed of our dynamic website and we've got less bounce rate. We've got a lower bounce rate. We got more transactions, more searches, engagement. more yeah. engagement. Yeah. And people came back more and there were more sessions. You know, so can we actually tie all this great stuff down into ROI, real business terms, so that when there is the from like this morning's keynote, this this feedback loop to management from DevOps and say, hey yeah, you know, we increased how many people, how long they stayed, how many pages they viewed, and how much they spent. And yes, we have to pay a bill for a service provider, but that's what we got. So you're giving us 17 of these things tomorrow. I have 17 of them, yeah. Because tomorrow's the 17th. Yeah, that's right. Excellent. <laughs> well, I look forward to seeing you and cool. your colleagues in uh, Barcelona. In we shall be there. a month or so. Yeah, absolutely. That'll All be right, awesome. Steve, thank you for your time. Thanks, thank Mike. You. Cheers.